And finally, we insist that all the 17 variables be uh, non-negative, and that's about it. Okay, and uh, of course, in in Tina tailoring in uh, in binary assignments, we additionally must add, and please add it for me. All right, that we insist that the x i j uh, uh, are binary. All right, doesn't have to be grammatically right. Just x i j binary uh, to say that that's the case. So what happens then? Uh, well, let's turn our attention to the Excel, right? Why don't we just look at Excel? And here is the setup for Tina tailoring. Um, we have uh, the decision variables here, all 20 of them, all right? And then the coefficients, uh, the row constraints. We do a sum instead of sum product because we basically will be... Um, Multiplying by a, a set of table of coefficients one 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 throughout, so multiplying by one is just the variable back itself. So might as well just sum. So it's just more a convenient hack, uh, to 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 reduce the complexity of carrying another table of all ones. That's all. Okay. So and it's quite commonly done, and since it doesn't affect the clarity so much, uh, we can live with that. Yeah. So clarity and unambiguity will be the foremost consideration whether or not we do some little bit of hack to simplify the expressions. So the right hand side is the same, but the right hand side is over here. And for column wise kind of constraints, we again sum them and insist that they are less than equal to one. So the right hand side is actually bottom hand side right? because of the table nature, but that's fine. Uh, so long as it's clear, right? it's understandable that we are comparing or we are enforcing this column sum to be less than equal to uh, this so-called right-hand side, uh, which is positioned at the bottom. Then the usual thing is the sum product, and we have two huge blocks to be sum producted together. No problem, because uh, sum product can just take any arbitrary two rectangles of the same uh, design and shape and do a cell-by-cell -cell product and add them together. Okay, so those are the features so far. Now, a little bit more <coughs> into excuse me, into the decision variables. And uh, we originally had the design of 17 decision variables. Okay. But here we have 20. And if we look at our solver with a uh, solver form, we actually are using all 20 of them. Like this. Okay. And why? Why do we do that? Because otherwise will be quite a chore, quite a pain. Let's look at that, right? So we are not allowing a uh, bullfighter's outfit. Yeah, okay, um, let's just change it to some other colors. Not allowed. Okay, we're not allowing, uh, sorry, this should be Taylor 3. We're not allowing Taylor 3 to do clown costume. We're not allowing Taylor 4 to do <coughs> Admiral's uniform. Okay. Now, how are we going to sum product this? Tough, right? Because uh, <clears throat> you're going to have to do sum product of maybe the biggest block, right? Yeah, with this block. Um, and then you have to sum product, you know. You know what I'm trying to do, right? Because I'm trying to uh, avoid touching the, the red cells like this, isn't it? Yeah, so you keep doing that. But that's really quite tedious and, and uh, very unproductive, when especially when you have 100 tailors and uh, a few hundred costumes with a lot of preferences, with a lot of pockets of holes in between. You're going to be able to see the, 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 the problem with that. And, and uh, it is very prone to mistakes, right? We can accidentally include the red zone or exclude it more uh, of the blue cells when they're actually needed. So that's dangerous because it's very hard to check also. Yeah. So for for reasons of um, safety, uh, because we don't want to calculate the wrong model by including excluding the coefficients wrongly, and reliability, we need to have some comfort and confidence that dear customer, dear boss, right, this is the best assignment. We need to say that confidently. So we should be uh, using the entire 20 uh, uh, cells because that's more reliable. But when we do that, 
we need to ensure that these red cells don't participate in influencing our overall optimality. So that's the reason why we used very special coefficients. Yeah, because we re-included the three excluded cells. But what about the coefficients? Right, this is where we use very expensive right, uh, hours, very high number of hours to tell Excel that if you right, ever think about assigning Move Fighters outfit to Taylor One, your cost will explode. Right? And remember, we are minimizing. So solver will say, whoops, can I do better? Yeah, by not assigning, I can actually do much, much better, not incrementally better. So, so it will refrain from assigning this, uh, what we already know as, as unassignable task. All right. Okay, so that's the rationale for having uh, arbitrary coefficient here, right? We didn't know that it's 1,000. So how high should this number be? Now, this is our mathematical hack here, our Excel hack here. So it is up to us, so long as it's mm, ballpark figure, two times the maximum of, you know, all the coefficients, uh, at least that, then it will do, you know, to scare off uh, Excel. So for convenience and for identif and identifiability, uh, I just put a thousand here, and that's enough to frighten off uh, Excel. So we just do a convenient and a conventional sum product, you know, zapping the two rectangles in one go. Okay, and that is good enough for Excel to do the right thing. So let's just solve it and see. Uh, we do a solver. Uh, you can't see the solver window because it pops up as another window that uh, is not captured. But um, uh, if I try to do the screen display, right, good. So now you see it, right? So um, everything is as it is. And we added the binary uh, constraint here, all right? And of course, there is this make unconstrained variables non-negative to make it non-negative. Uh, and we have the binary, okay? And when we solve it, you see the Excel didn't complain. And uh, basically, that's done, all right? So we, we did get optimality. All right, solver found a solution, and that's it, okay? All right, so far so good. Okay, all the constraints are adhered to. Now, uh, what happens if we, just, just for experiment's sake, right, for understanding, what happens if we delete it or we solve it as an LP relaxation, right? Remember, we momentarily ignore the binary constraint. Uh, then, uh, well, let's just erase answer first. Then what will happen? Well, um, let's just see first. Okay, we managed to get binary answers, okay? And that's just uh, lucky, right? So the nature of the problem requires us to, to explain, to tell Solver and Excel that it is a binary thing. Don't ever tell me, assign 0 0.5 of wedding gown to Taylor One. You know, I don't know what to do. So we know that we upfront the nature of our inquiry, our, the nature of our decision is either do or don't. So it makes sense, therefore, to translate that requirement as a binary uh, constraint. Yeah? So we will say that uh, for these outcomes, the decision variables, Excel, tell me only binary outcomes. All right? So what I'm trying to show you here is that even when we didn't add, all right, and by chance, the answer turns out to be solvable and also zeros and ones, it is kind of not quite right modeling because it is only after the fact that we say, oh, luckily, you know, the answers are all zero and one. And you do not want to make decisions based on luckily the answers are coinciding with what I know about the right answer. But wait a minute. <laughs> Before that, how did I know the right answer, right? So if you are doing that kind of solutioning uh, thinking that is not very reliable. So the better way is based on our nature. Our So we start from the source. What do we want? We want a really a yes or no answer. Okay. Then in that case, tell Solver that, right? So Solver is our consultant and we explain to the consultant and say that, hey, 
don't give me maybe you can try this maybe you can try that halfway kind of answers please tell me do or don't right yeah we we, we say that to our friends to our our uh, uh, teacher to our advisors as well so same thing we will tell excel uh, that we want zero or one answers by inserting this constraint okay and when we do that yes you know our answer is ones and zeros anyways and uh, uh, excel shouldn't have difficulty doing that however had it been otherwise right that means if you do not put in the binary you might have obtained uh, um, decimal answers then that means if you put in the binary constraint uh, uh, and you don't you should have put in it but you don't then your answers will not be optimal so be very very careful of what is the original requirement and then translate that faithfully into the uh, linear programming okay so that is uh, what we want to learn from this example some of the uh, ways to do things initially but subsequent um, uh, subsequent examples we will we will go through a little bit faster so because uh, the basics have already been explained right so however we will still take advantage of subsequent uh, examples to learn even more tricks so that we can expand our ability to solve bigger pool of problems mm -hmm.